Hey, what's up everybody? If you appreciate the format and you appreciate what we're doing here, then make sure you contribute to the Cash App, make sure you contribute to the PayPal, make sure you donate to the Super Chat. It's only you and your contributions that keep this thing going. Thanks. Thank you everybody for your contributions. I appreciate it. Let's keep it going. Donate to the Super Chat, donate to the PayPal, donate to the Cash App. It's your contributions and your donations that will cause for this platform to grow. Let our voice be the voice, the preeminent voice in Black America. What's up, everybody? This is Dennis Sperling. I'm back again. We're going to continue with our second part in the series, Social Contract Between Black Men and Black Women, The Traditional Role. As I explained uh, earlier today, in a contract, both parties have obligations which they have to fulfill. I went over several of the obligations that, um, in general, that men and women have to fill their roles in the relationship. I went over the situation where um, we'll, talk, we'll talk about parenting, uh, parentalism, uh, parenting. We'll also talk about interracial relationships because all of these were obligations that black folks had in their social contract. But because many of these things now, many of these items, many of these terms have been breached, we are now in a situation where black men have to reevaluate whether or not this social contract is worthy of being reinstated. As I used the analogy earlier, the lovely ladies of our group, these lovely women that we love so much that raised us, and brought us up to be such wonderful men in this world that we live in, who we give shots out to, specifically our mothers and, 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 and whatnot, we want to make sure we acknowledge the fact that they are lovely ladies, and that's why we refer to them as lovely ladies here in the Dennis Sperling Unfiltered Broadcast. Nevertheless, as to the role of traditionalism and how the terms of traditionalism are laid out in the contract, um, it's one thing. Men are supposed to be protectors and providers. Women are supposed to be the homemakers and the nurturers of the children. But along came feminism. Along came feminism and a version of feminism was adapted and adapted and applied to the black community and we call that black feminism. Now here's the problem. The purpose of, for the purpose of feminism, or should I say uh, the reason feminism came about in the first place is because uh, the dominant society, white women were having an issue with white men. What was that issue? issue was white guys weren't sharing their stuff. What stuff am I talking about? The stuff that they had accumulated over the past 500 years uh, after they had dominated the, work, uh, the world. And here's the other thing. They weren't giving, you know, white women their female counterparts their fair share. Here's the other thing. White women were basically treated like second, third class citizens. So they protested. They had a problem with that. And so, you know, what do you think they did? they decided to um, get on board. They had the feminist movements. They had all these different things. Um, but the reason they were protesting uh, the patriarchy, the reason that feminism came about was because white women didn't have the right to vote. They didn't have the right to hold office. They didn't have the right to own land. Many of them didn't have the right to work. All, I mean, or some variation of that. Matter of fact, black men got the right to vote before white women. And see, the thing is here, and the thing we should keep in mind is that um, white men held the keys. They held the keys to society. They held the, the keys to, 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 to the reins of, of power in the United States and most of the Western world. And so because of that, they had a, um, and because of that, 
they 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 have the authority to change and they also have the authority to determine all those things if white women can work if they where they could live where they could go to school all these different things it was schools that white women couldn't get in and so they had the power they had the power to make those changes the problem is and the difference is as far as a black man is we never had control over black women we were not the ones who were in charge of black men at least in the past 500 years this has been something that that uh this has been something that white people white people had control of this society so now in a situation where we are being held to the same standard as white men in other words let's take a look at this you got black men who've been out of power here in the United States, brought to here on the slave ships, in the hulls of shed slave ships to do what? To work and to labor. And then you got what? You got black women who were done to what? Now they're saying we're oppressing them as, as though we could control where they were. We could control where, we, where they live, where they went to school. We had no way of doing that. So when it comes to a situation where you're applying black feminism, where you're applying, uh, 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 white feminism to, to black men, we didn't do it. It wasn't something we had any control over. So it was just a misnomer. It was, a, it was something that should have never happened. Black men have not controlled white women in this country uh, in the past 500 years. That's not my original quote. That's a quote from uh, Sister Shaharazad Ali. So in a situation like that, why were we even, we even subject to it? Either way, that's what we're going to talk about. Now, as a binary, something that I just find very interesting is that, uh, you know, think about it. white men should probably be the most pissed off people on this planet. Why is that? Because hell, they did all this pillaging and, 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 and bloodletting <laughs> on behalf of their counterparts just for what? So that she could do what? Turn around and come up with me too. turn around and, 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 and basically crap on him in public and call him all sorts of names, uh, you know, you know, rebel against the patriarchy. They should be really upset about that. But the effect, the thing we want to talk about is the effect that feminism had on the black community. As I said before, there's a misapplication of feminism as applied to the role played in the oppression of black men, black women in this country. It's been white men who've controlled where both black men and black women could live white men who control whether or not uh, uh, laws would allow us to do what? Enter into different colleges and universities, jobs that we can work, right to vote, how much we could be paid. The, it was white men in control. So what is it that, why would you even use feminism as, as it opposed to black women to get what rights back? These are the rights that white women were trying to get white men, white, white men to give them. Black men didn't have control of any of that. So what's the point? Nevertheless, it was a part. Um, and so here's the effect. Um, black women are now expected to do what? Feminism has basically destroyed the traditional roles, at least in, in, as far as the, at least as far as the social contract between black men and black women is, is, is uh, related to. So now what do we have? We got black women are expected to fulfill the traditional roles women have played in home, but, but, but receive all of and, and but they still want to receive all the benefits of traditionalism. So what does that mean? <clears throat> that means black men want they were expected to do domestic work. That means cooking and cleaning. And now they still have to do that. But they're also expected to raise the children to the majority age. In addition to that, uh, now even what that does is it allows them to have the benefit of, of complete authority over the household drawbacks are many of these children are raised in poverty. Many of these children are suffering mental and emotional issues, which lead to depression and incarceration. And uh, they're less able to cope with society. Look at the suicide rate amongst children raised uh, amount around single mothers. Here's another thing. Um, women are also expected to provide for themselves and children. Now, there's some benefits to that in that they get the freedom of auton autonomy. Okay, you can work. You're on your own. Nobody's coming in to uh, tell you what to do. You are free to do what? But guess what that comes with? That comes with stress associated with work and for providing themselves for the entirety of their lives with no little to no support. So what that means is they're now having to deal with the same things that black men or men in tradition, men generally have had to deal with. 
Now, ironically, it was white women that did what? They went back to their husbands. Their marriage rate ain't fluctuating that much. It's pretty much the same, especially amongst the higher uh, 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 rungs, the higher classes. So here's another thing. Um, what about black men? Black men are expected to fulfill the traditional roles that men have always played, but do not receive the traditional benefits received by men. Here's the thing. As a man, if you were a married man, you were seen reverence, you were seen as responsible. You were seen as uh, you were, you were uh, lauded for being a real man, quote unquote. And so because of that, there was some intangible benefits associated with that. But now, if you are married or even if you're in a relationship, you're going to have to experience with a, a more subservient role. I, as I pointed out in our earlier broadcast, you're not you're shamed as a chauvinist if you try to take the lead and you're shamed as a beta male if you're willing to be subservient. So what does that do? Oh, my God. What that does is it makes you feel awkward. Whatever position you're in, you're out of place. Here's the thing. If you try to be equal. And what does that do? Then that's going to create constant clashing because anybody who knows anything about 50 50 partners, you never can get anything done. And in, 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 in as far as a contract, it often ends up in litigation. So what do we do? You, you deal with that. Now, most of these guys aren't getting married. Now. Most of these 51 percent of black men aren't married. Uh, about 20 percent of black men have children. We only have about 20, 30 percent of black men who are married of which and in that section, only 75% of those black men, more or less, I'll say about 80% of those black men are married to, though that are married, are, are married to African-American women, with about 20% more or less married outside of the race. So that's somewhere, so the number fluctuates, but it's about 20% because you also got to take in the fact that many of those women are of African descent. Now, where were we now? So let's go back to the, the other thing. So we got a situation where, um, so if you got a situation where you have uh, a person who is not willing to get married, you're stuck with what? You're stuck with parental alienation, especially if you have kids. Parental alienation is what? Where the child is what? Not able to see the father. You got to deal with divorce. You got to deal with the the money associated with paying for a child for the past 18 or for the next 18 years, you have to deal with the situation where you got a divorce. And so now you're dealing with the financial problems associated with breaking up the family. It's a real bad situation financially. So a lot of guys are just not even, they don't even want to jump in. They only want to get into that. Here's another thing. If you stay married again, like I said, you're not the authority of the house and then, or you can play the subservient role. And, um, you know, as I said earlier, there's a conflict stemming from lack of respect. Now, what are the benefits associated with feminism hitting the black community and vitiating the the uh, the social contract that exists between black men and black women as to traditional women? Well, let's think about it. benefits diminishing. There's a diminishing stigma associated with bachelorhood. So what does that mean? That means in 1920, 1910, 1880. You got a situation where what? Black men and most men were looked at with a, with, with a jaundiced eye, so to speak, because they were bachelors. But now that's not so much. That's diminishing them. Here's another thing. You're free to travel because you don't have a family per se. Yeah, you might have children, you might have a child's woman, an ex-wife, whatever, but you don't necessarily have a family. So you're free to do what you want to do. Here's another thing. Along, if you look at parental alienation for what it is, it means that you have a minimal responsibility to child rearing. This is, uh, yeah, it's cold blooded, it's cold calculated, but let's look at what it is. And, and it is what it is. So you don't have that sort of responsibility. You're weekend dad. You get them two weekends out of the month if you want to. All you're obligated to do is pay your child support on time. And if you do that, there's nothing that any state can do. Nobody can make you spend time with those children. This is, it gives you freedom. It is what it is. This is the benefits. These are, I mean, depending on how you look at it, it's the benefits, it gives you freedom. Freedom, of, and, and here's another thing, you can pretty much date indiscriminately because you're not married, you're not obligated, you don't have a girlfriend, you may have kids, but you're free. You know, this is what it does. So now, what do I think? What's the likely outcome? 
my perspective is that men, excuse me, one minute, let me get my notes straight here, if I can. It's always hard. My perspective is from the, from the perspective of men, the social contract as it relates to, tra to traditionalism requires men to fulfill tangible obligations while receiving only intangible benefits, i.e. respect and reverence, which can be accomplished in other means. What does that mean? What that means is men are quickly realizing that the benefits, that even the benefits they received under traditionalism when it was fully in place were only intangible. But what were they having to give up? Their time, their energy, their resources, their time at work to earn money, to provide, uh, their energy directed towards things that they may not even want to do. In other words, you take a job working at the plant, you work there 40, 50 years and put your kids through school. And what do you get? Yeah, you got some kids who graduate. Maybe they'll be grateful. Maybe they won't. They go on to live their great lives. But the bottom line is you didn't really get, get a chance to fulfill your dream. What if you didn't want to work at that Ford? What if you didn't want to work at that, that Ford plant in Detroit for 50 years? See, your energies can be directed towards other things. So what is that? You give it, you, 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 you are no longer obligated to do that. You didn't receive anything from a tangible. You can get that in other places. So where are we? This is where we are. This is what, this is what feminism has done to the black community. It's basically presented men with an option out of traditionalism, which depending on how you look at it, it's not really a bad deal, which is why so many men are saying, Hey, you know, I'm not even willing to even get married. But anyway, I want to give a shout out to everybody in the chat room. Shout out to my mods, Volcanus, uh, Malika. Thank you guys so much. Shout out to Volcanus. I appreciate the uh, the uh, super chat. Hit the like button on the way in. Let's keep the chat room classy. Yes, let's keep the chat room classy. So, fellas, we got about 35 people in the chat room. This is the second stream. Got People watching, look, if you appreciate what we're doing here, hit the like button. Make sure you come in, hit the like button, like, share, subscribe. This is an interesting conversation. This is high order. We're talking about traditional roles in the black community and how it has been affected by black feminism. We're only talking, we got several other days of discussion, so let's not skip ahead to some of the other things. We, we're just hitting on traditional roles. This is what I want to talk about. Are these beneficial to black? Were the traditional roles beneficial to black men in the first place? This is the question we want to ask. And what were what did we have to give up in, re, in, in return for what we received? Is it worth it? These are the questions that we have to ask ourselves. What we're doing here is we're treating this social, this so-called war of the sexes, we're going to treat it like a contract negotiation. Why are we doing that? Because when you start, when you insert the word war in it, we had a war on drugs. We had a war on terrorism. Uh, what, what else did we have? We had a war, a cold war. All that seems to end bad. It, it, it makes the person seem like an enemy combat, combatant. And what do you do with an enemy combatant? You destroy that person. And we don't want to have that sort of vitriol in the black community. Let's remove that term from the lexicon. Let's instead call this what it is, a social contract between black men and black women that reads, needs to be renegotiated. After all, as I said before, black women had better options, so they opted out. These lovely ladies had better options. The 1960s came about, feminism said, you know what, let's get out of here. They just use it as a reason. But the government said, I'll give you some money. I'll send you to school. I'll, I'll, uh, you know, I'll give you uh, the benefits associated with uh, affirmative action, at least to a point. I'll give you some jobs. I'll make you the most educated group of people in the United States. And that's what they did. And so they opted out. On top of that, honey, you can have your freedom. You don't have to have that man telling you what to do. And here we go. And they took it, which is something that human beings will do. Human beings will always do what's in their best interest. They have to. Otherwise, they would appreciate, uh, undermine their own survival. So let's think about it in that term. So let's end the vitriol. Let's get away from the terminology of war of the sexes, and let's begin to refer to this as a contract negotiation, specifically a negotiation of the social contract. If you decide to come out, fine. Oh my God, my girl, my home girl, Kimberly's in here. What's up, Kimberly? If you want to come in, make sure uh, 
you come on in. I want to definitely get you in here tonight because I'd love to have your perspective. Kimberly is one of one of the realest ladies that I know. She's a real down sister. She's a business owner. And on top of that, she has a son. And I find that women who have sons are a lot more likely to be open minded as to and fair minded, I should say, uh, than any other group. So uh, if you can get a chance to come in here, Kim, check the inbox. I'd love to have you come in here. But look, we got to end this vitriolic, toxic back and forth. Uh, you, you tell somebody that's your enemy. You tell somebody uh, we're at war. And some people are going to hear that language and they're going to take it seriously. They're going to take it to, to the wrong end. It's like having that guy in your entourage when you, you point out, oh, man, that's this dude I don't like, right? And then they just take it too far. You, you just, The next thing you know, you're on the evening news because somebody in your entourage, you know, did something stupid or crazy or over the top. We don't do that. Not on this page. We have heated debates. We have discussions. But what we do is we keep it civil. We are we are we are descendants of the American slave system. We have enough enemies. There's no need for us to to begin to tear each other down. All right. I don't care uh, what religion you are. I don't care uh, what part of the country you're from. What I want to do is begin to try to build and start it with black men, because without black men, there is nothing. Without black men, you have no black community because you have no defense, you have no provision. You have nobody to build it. So that's why I start with black men. But of course, it's always great to have Ken, Kimberly, Kimberly in here at Butterfly Production, Butterfly Works. So Kim, come on in if you get a chance. Who else? Anybody else who wants to come in? Let me see here. Volcanoes, hit the like button is on your way in. Uh, let me see. Let's see what else. Traditional, the shine, apply, tradition. Come on in. Let's have you want to talk about traditionalism. Come on in. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about how the contract, right, has been vitiated. The link is open. Join the conversation. Let's talk about it. Let's get this going. I want to hear what you guys, I want to hear all what all these intelligent minds have to say. And uh, this is a, hey, and look, another thing, you guys appreciate what I'm doing, man. Contribute to the super chat. Contribute to the cash app. You know what I mean? I don't want to run any, but you guys see I've been running less commercials, right? Because I want you guys to just contribute because you appreciate the platform. But I will run a commercial, but I want you guys to contribute because you appreciate what I'm doing. The link is in the chat room. The, uh, the uh, I'm sorry, the PayPal is running across the bottom of the screen. If you appreciate what's going on, man, let's get this thing cracking. So anyway, the link is in the chat room. You guys come on in. Let's have this conversation. What else can we do? Uh, all right, Malika, don't. Hey, Malika, this is Dennis. Uh, let's not. We I know we have uh, a gentleman in here who who basically said uh, some stuff that you guys look. This gentleman here, he he's he made a recent video about me, and I know you guys don't want to. You time them out. I should have said something, Malika. Don't. We don't want to time out anybody who has a disagreeing uh, opinion. I appreciate it. I invite it. I sit down with people all the time who have different opinions. So it's okay, but <laughs> you deleted, you blocked the young brother, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's okay. What's up, Malaga? How you doing, man? I know you y'all ain't taking none of it, man. Malaga, that old police instinct kicked in, huh, bro? <laughs> He's um, good, brother. How you doing? Happy Sunday to you and your family. Happy Sunday to you too, bro, man. But you don't have to delete the brother. I, I was actually going to get around to him, but um, this cool, man, I guess. Uh, my name, the guy's name is Life of Grandmaster Troll. I think his real name is Kenneth or something like that. Kenneth, look. I, I know him well, man. I, know you know, him I, don't, well. I don't know him at all. I just, somebody put his, said that this guy is making a video. What they got to understand is that, you know, uh, you can disagree with a person without being disagreeable. You know what I mean? And I'm pretty, uh, pretty straightforward with where I'm coming from. You know what I mean? And I, uh, I, I invite folks in to have conversations. How, how many, what is that? You put them in a five minute timeout. Uh, let's get in here. Uh, our, oh Lord, help us Jesus. No, no, it's fine, man. Life of Grandmaster Troll, you're welcome to come in here. I didn't intend for you to be 
putting time out. I'd love to have a conversation with you. At the end of the day, uh, like that's a young black man. You see what I'm saying? And I've had plenty of occasions where young black men have come in and had a lot to say. And I just listen, you know, and then maybe I'll ask some questions. And then after a while, you know, maybe we can kind of find some common ground. I'm not so concerned about that. As long as people aren't out there defaming and saying horrible things, I don't really have any, uh, you know, as long as they're not lying and saying. Let me just say something, brother. I would say something, but this is your platform. Sure, sure. Go and ahead. I'm not, and I'm not trying to no, I want start to listen, up a hornet's nest. Yes, sir. He's just known to be a troublemaker. And he's known to dox other famous black YouTubers. And he's doing it for fun. And he's trying to get attention on here. Yeah. And he he's... He he's not all there, and I'm not trying to make fun, but he meaning no, no. that he he's a but I I understand, but I mean yeah. he he gets off on this by going to up and coming YouTubers and also famous YouTubers mm -hmm. and making a name for himself. Mm -hmm. And you know sometimes Malika, uh, there's a story about a. a, a you ever heard the story about that sea serpent that lays at the bottom of the ocean? You mean Loch Ness Monster? No, no. There's a, there's a little plant that lays at the bottom of the ocean, and it looks like it's docile. And it's, it looks like it's dead. And then the fish come up and bite it. Ah, I got you. When they come up and bite it, it, they, it injects them with poison mm -hmm. and destroys them. You see? So, you know, I, I don't have a problem with... Uh, Folks coming in here and doxing me is like trying to dox the clouds. You, everybody can see it. I mean, I got books, TV mm -hmm. shows. You know what I mean. I got websites up the wazoo. You see what I'm saying? Uh, so I'm not really so concerned. And you know what? I feel you, big brother. I feel you. Yeah, it was yeah, just my life is public. And, and, and I know that it's just that. Um, yeah. I, I, like how you said that that old yeah. instinct that I have is just protecting uh, protecting people. Yeah, and it was yeah, just, yeah. and it was just, uh, but the thing is, it, it wasn't, it's not just you. It's just out of love that we have good platforms where we as black mm -hmm. men, we can talk. Like you say, you created a platform for us black men to talk because we don't have a voice. And like you said, this right. is a platform where we're not arguing, bickering back and forth. We're just having conversation. Well, you know, I appreciate that, Mike. And you're, you are, your wisdom is on point. Definitely. I just, I, I like to invite my people who have opposing views in. I, you know, it, it's it's always good to hash it out. Now, um, you know, let's just, Mr. Uh, Kenneth, is, I think his real name is Ken. Ken, you're invited to come in. He goes by the name of uh, um, uh, Grandmaster Troll. What is his name here? Life of a Grandmaster Troll, we'll just call him Grandmaster Troll, right? We'll invite him in. You know what I'm saying? So, so Grandmaster Troll, uh, Ken, I want you to come in here you, if you want to. Uh, I didn't mean for you to be uh, put in the 30, uh, a, a 300 second uh, timeout. I'm glad that Malika didn't block you. <laughs> but uh, either way, man, what do you think about this conversation, bro? What do you think about this? And we're, we're limiting it to the social contract between black men and women as related to the traditional roles, because there was a contract, right? There were obligations on both sides. The man is supposed to protect and provide. The woman is supposed to nurture and take care of the children and, and have the children. That's in its rawest sense of the word. That's the, those are the terms of the contract. So, you know, what happened when feminism came along? What happened? Well, feminism. Go to Kimberly. Kimberly. Hello. Hello. Hello, sister. How are you doing? Oh, good. How are you doing? It's a pleasure to meet you. Nice All to right. meet you as well. All right. So, what are your thoughts on that, Malika? What what uh, name did I miss him? No, What's you was going? on. Man, come on. You always on point like a sniper. Like I always tell you, man. You you're, you're given your you, the the thing was you broke it down 
Uh-huh. And I like how the way you say it. it's a contract, a social contract between not just black men and women, between men and women, mm-hmm. where our mm-hmm. roles are supposed to be. Right. When only thing that I could say you missed off on was uh, 1962 uh, Welfare Reform Act was uh-huh. given to getting well, not given to us, given to our women, mm-hmm. as opposed also to feminism, which gave women the option to not need us. Uh-huh. We were we never left our roles, right? We still at the table, like BGS and Kevin Samuel said. We never left the table. Mm. Wow! I said we were always here, despite whatever the despite whatever problems and issues that we have, despite despite the heroin epidemic, despite unemployment, despite crack, despite whatever thing that came down, black men never left. It was just the smoke screens and the lies that was put out. Mm-hmm. That said that we wasn't there, you know, black man ain't ish, you know, we ain't never there. And you men can't measure up to me. Well, you were allowed to move up. We still right. ha- we still always had that glass ceiling above us. Mm-hmm. And even to the point where if we do move up, like how you said, we still had that confusion. If we too, if we move up and we become too obedient to you, we're looked at simps. But if we stay back and not want to deal with the BS, now we're sellouts. We're wrong. We're, we're, we're men. We're evil. Mm-hmm. So we're kind of perplexed. Like, you know, we want to be with you. But at the same time now, and especially with social media coming up now in the latter part of the 20th century and coming up now to the 21st century, we have a voice and we're speaking out. And now right. we're just getting tired to the point of like, look, OK, we want to be with you. But we're coming to the table and we got to say, okay, we're not just coming to the table and shake and say, let's get back together again. So, no, there's some right. changes that need to be made. We right. never left to the table. We never left right. at the table. The thing is, let's tear up, let's tear up this old kind jerk and let's do something. Ice Cube right. did that a few months ago with the um platinum plan. Mm. And you saw the resistance that happened with him. He wasn't think, saying he wasn't saying, all right, let's 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 come to a kumbaya moment. Like, no. I think, I think need- these lovely ladies like the things where most of them they like the way things are because they get the benefits of both worlds. I use I use the analogy of having a Laker contract and also a Miami Heat contract. Both mm-hmm. the teams are paying you, but all you have to do is play ball for the Miami Heat. You get the benefits of both both worlds. Yeah, you still saying? keep you still keep your power. You still keep, oh, yeah, you still, power. so in other words, but see, as you see, I laid out, you know, everything that glitters ain't gold. Yeah, you got the autonomy and the right to be the woman of the house, but also with that comes responsibility. Yeah, you can raise the children on your own, but my goodness, that comes with some responsibility and some headaches. You got to get up, you got to go to work, you got to get those kids ready. If there's a flat tire, you got to make sure that's taken care of. You got to check the engine light off. You got to take care of that. You got to come up with lunch money. Got to make sure those kids are red and fed and 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 off the bed. Exactly. <laughs> While your baby daddy or your ex husband is out partying and hanging out, guess who's staying at home watching those kids? For typically about two hundred fifty dollars a month in child support. So I don't know that there's some drawbacks, there's some benefits and drawbacks to go along with this. Uh, vitiating of the uh the contract vitiating the social contract there's some can i can i mention something again too yeah yeah of course brother they ain't playing the long game because you having mm-hmm. all this pseudo power in the beginning but then no one told them 60 years down the line you would still have a jacked up black community mm-hmm. well you i don't have... think the community was jacked up i mean at least we were married you know in this in in 60 years ago yeah, now, that's we don't even have that. Exactly, because you yeah. at least because you because during the um civil rights movement, you saw black man, black woman, and black child together. And mm-hmm. we was going through hell back then. But right. at least the thing was we had a community. We had well, a see, community. See, we could have weathered we weathered that storm together. Mm-hmm. Now we're being annihilated. Exactly. See, that's why I'm that's because what I'm it's separation. With. You're separate, you took the man away. Yeah. And the thing is. We're still standing there at that, at the roadblock. We never mm-hmm. left. Right. So I appreciate that, man. That's a good opening. Uh, hey, Kimberly, Kimberly, how you doing? What's happening? 
I'm good. How are you, kind sir? So nice to see and talk with you. I'm good. Look, I, so I, I want to run some stuff by you. I want you to, I, this is not, a, it's on subject, but it's off subject. How do you like the fact that I refer to our lovely ladies as lovely ladies? What do you think about that? Wasn't that just a genius? <laughs> it, very, very genius. And I yeah. caught on that early on. You say yeah. lovely. Uh, I get it. Yeah. I get it. And it isn't condescending, but it's it's thought provoking. You yeah. And see, mean? and see, the thing is, so now you're angry with me referring to you as a lovely lady. That's mm -hmm. it. You know, never why? satisfied. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so. And so, but the other thing is, I'm trying to teach these brothers, let's get rid of this vitriol. Let's, because you can't, uh, uh, unfortunately, a lot of our brothers were raised by women and they have not been taught, as men have been taught, to control their emotions, even in the face of someone who they're very angry with. A lot of these brothers are angry with their moms, they're angry with their ex wives, they're angry with their baby mamas. And so it does not serve them any purpose to become more angry by calling women, you know, uh, itches and O's and, yep. mm -hmm. you know, so let's just call them lovely ladies. Let's throw a different kind of vibe out there. You know, let's throw, yeah. some, throw some different energy. What I do, what I want to do, Kimberly, is I want to change the lexicon. I want to change the terminology. You see what I mean? It's mm -hmm. serving. See, here's, a, here's the irony, right? All these black men, all these brothers and sisters, they're mad at each other, but that didn't stop them from making babies. You know, that's <laughs> that ain't stopping them from going to the cookout, going to their grandma house, because some of the same women that they're upset about are in their families. Some of the same women that they're mad about, they've had children with. They have even married to. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> let's let's begin to try to tone that. We got to begin to tone down the rhetoric, you know, so I want to change in my part to try to change this from a war of the sexes to a contract dispute, which sounds pretty benign, right? It's much better than we at war, we're going to kill each other. The people who are looking at us, they're laughing at us for that. You see what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but, mm -hmm. Well, go ahead. I, I appreciate you. What are your thoughts on this? Or just whatever you want to open up any kind of way you want to. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate it. So I was taking down notes when the gentleman was speaking. Mm -hmm. And I, it's always been perplexing to me that some of the women who have made it in the corporate world and gone up the food chain, they've developed the same attitude as um, their bosses, old mm -hmm. pale and stale, if you will. Oh, and God. <laughs> that's what we refer I heard to that one before. <laughs> or old pale and yell, however you want uh -huh. to put it. But uh -huh. um, it seems like there's this thing to compare our men to someone who's had a 400 year start. That's not logical. Right. That's just not logical. So I think we need to realize that without the attitude and then understand what what men really want. You know, uh, they want peace and they need uh -huh. peace and they deserve peace. Right. Uh -huh. And it's not about what well, we need peace, too. Well, if we give our men peace, then naturally we're going to have peace because they are our providers and our protectors innately. Mm -hmm. Like the gentleman said, they never left. They never uh -huh. left us. We were just. Uh, bamboozled. And now later, you know, they like to have all the power on the front end, but then rationalize later on in life when they realize maybe that wasn't right. Mm -hmm. uh, I see a lot of, I just saw a celebrity. I didn't know. She's a really pretty celebrity. She was married to a man. Now she's married to a woman. Oh, I, had, wow. yeah. I know I had no idea. Niecy Nash. And I see a lot of. I that. remember her. I remember her. Yeah, she was in yeah. some movies back in the day. Yeah, she's married to to a, a woman now, and and that's fine. You know, I, I don't judge, but no, it's, it's not. Hey, well, I mean, it's fine look, if that's her I decision, mean, not in my life. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, I mean, can we be? Uh, how does that? I mean, okay, so look, it's legal, and you have a right to do it. But how does that help the black community? No, it um, doesn't. That's that's exactly. what I'm saying. You see what I'm but, saying? Let's yeah, let's but, not let's see. You know what thing is, sister? I know you live in California. I've been there before. I don't even like flying over California. No, because, I, hear me out. Hear me out. I don't. I don't. That's not it, my thing. If that's know, her choice, that's her choice, and it does damage our community. Yeah. Uh, if, I don't. If, I don't. But like let me that. give you an example. I don't like gambling, right? And so you, there's no way you can convince me that gambling is okay. 
I consider that bad. But it's okay for me to say, hey, that's not something I do. I don't support it. It's not good for us. But if I say, you know, this, that, this lifestyle, that lifestyle is not good for us. I don't support it. There's not enough black Americans in America. All right. We're already under attack. Now, I love all of my people, but I can disagree with some of your choices. Is that okay? Like oh, many yeah, of you I, disagree with things I do. Absolutely. It's okay for you to tell me that. Can we be honest with each other? I know what the dominant society said. I know what the dominant society says. And this cancer, uh, this uh, cancer, yeah, cancer, this cancer is cancel culture. I know what it says. Yes, it's legal, just like gambling is legal, just like many other things are legal. But it's not necessarily something that's good for the black community. And I get it. I'm a heterosexual uh, black male. I'm a chauvinist. What is the word? Misanthrop? Misan something like that. Misogynoir. I get that. Misogynoir. But I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. If me speaking the truth will help save some of our black brothers and sisters from going down that route, then, I, then I'm cool with it. You see what I'm right. saying? Yeah, yeah. But, but go so ahead. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I absolutely, that's her choice. That's her thing. I, you know, it's her choice. It's perfectly that's her, legal. That's her thing. Just it, like gambling, I just disagree with it. And it's not it good does, for our community. But go exactly. ahead. Exactly. It does not help our but community. I still love you, but I just disagree yeah. with you. But go ahead. Exactly. And I, well, let me say this. If I'm in a room and somebody's trying to pick on you or fight you, I'm going to be the first one to stand up and protect you. If it came down to protecting your rights under the law, I would defend you. But that doesn't necessarily mean I agree with your activity. And I know right. that's a nuanced position for people to take, but it is what it is. You see, but, because but, 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 but here's the whole dynamic, the mm -hmm. dynamic with our relationship in our community. You've gone to a woman after you're in your 50s. You've mm -hmm. been married. You have children. You've lived this life. And now all of a sudden you've changed. And I, I, I see a lot of that. And that's det detrimental. It, it, it also why why be do, so dismissive towards our men i mean those are some that's just strange to me um and then one thing i noticed cuz i'm i'm a, an interesting thinker i am here in los angeles a lot yeah. of single mothers like all over our country unfortunately but you know what a booming business is handyman <laughs> there are so many handymen because these women can't they they got these jobs they got these homes they can't maintain it. They try to do them themselves. They try to fix the garbage disposal or whatever. But you see all of these handyman businesses right. all over the place. It's yeah. a booming business. Sadly, well, though. Sadly. Well, you know what? Hey, you know what? Charge them. Like I tell you, like I tell people <laughs> all the time, like, you want me to talk to your son? I'm going to charge you. You see what I mean? Yeah. You, you should have had that man, that boy's husband, that boy's father to be in his life. So you want to hire a surrogate because you don't want to take the responsibility of having to deal with this other, this man who's his father and, 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 and listening to him, his instruction and allowing him to have say so and input into the child. OK, that's fine. You're going to pay me. I'm not doing it for free. I'm not. I'm, go ahead. And you know what else? You're absolutely right. Charge them. Charge and them. You're, you're, you're absolutely right, because sometimes when you charge someone, they listen to you. But when you give it for free, free game, they don't. I don't understand that dynamic. Wow. But the, the mistake that I've seen a lot of women make is that they want their son to be their husband and their husband to be their son. Right. And, when their son and, and when their son is out on their own with their own family or what have you, now they expect the husband to just step in like, you know, like everything should just pick up where she put him on hold for 20 years. Oh, wow. I don't think that's yeah. fair. Uh, and, and that's that's a that's a real observance. I'm yeah. so glad you said that, sister. I'm so glad it came from <laughs> a female's mouth. No, because yeah. men, we've been saying that for years, but it's coming from a female perspective, an honest, well, logical female perspective. Well, see, here's the thing with life. Here's what's happening. There have always been women like Kimberly Kimberly. They've always been there, but they need cover. See. Because you got this, this faction, this concophony of women who are blabbing out, I'm a victim, I haven't been taken care of, these men ain't this, these men, but you got women like Kimberly Kimberly, like that's not by, been my experience. As a matter of fact, I've seen things a bit differently. I've seen things both ways, but you never get that balanced view. You see what I'm saying? And so by black men now beginning to come out and speak the truth, 
it provides an opportunity for women like Kimberly Kimberly to come in and say, yeah, you know, now, again, I'm not going to be on here saying ill things about I'm going to speak the truth, but I'm not going to call them. I'm not going to call our, our, these lovely ladies out of their name. I'm not going to do it because I'm not going to be part of the reason why we have so much vitriol and destruction in the black community. All that does is just breeds more hate and contempt. And then next thing you know, y'all are just it's just it's not it's not a good look. It makes us look bad and we're tearing ourselves apart. So what we need to do is pretend let's pretend like we're on a ship together in the middle of the ocean and it's a storm. And the worst thing for us to do is fight each other because we're going to tear this ship apart. The best thing to do is let's just find some amicable middle ground in which we can agree and then hash out our differences. And if we decide that, you know, it's maybe only 30 percent of us should get married, well, then that's fine. But we still need to work out some sort of uh, contract, some sort of social contract so we can continue to exist so that what? so that the culture, so that the, the African descendants who created jazz, who endured the Middle Passage, who created a uh, hip hop, who endured slavery, who endured Jim Crow, who were the ones who spearheaded the rights that all these other folks have, hearing as these other black and brown and Asian people have come over these benefits, so that we still maintain a presence in this country. You see what I'm saying? Otherwise, we just tear ourselves apart, we'll get caught up in the American machine and we'll disappear in the next 150 years. And there'll be no trace of us. Maybe some pictures on the internet. Some people are checking some people's uh, attics. And oh my God, I didn't even know people look like this. This looks like an African woman in five years. We didn't know Africans were in the United States. You know what I'm saying? So let's not go the way of the dodo brother by tearing, tearing this thing up. And that's what I'm asking. See, Kimberly, I get a lot of brothers on here who are angry. They are angry, angry, angry. And the, the internet. It, it provides an opportunity for a lot of black men to, mm -hmm. to vent that anger. And I'm okay with it. I let them speak. I defend them. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? If there's a black man who's done something on TV or on the internet, I'll go on here and I'll present a defense as to why. You see what I mean? And that pisses people off because here, how dare you? You know, I mean, they go off. You just, <laughs> well, you <laughs> but know, I, do it. I, you know. I do it because it lets the brothers know that I love them and that I care for them. And, I'll, and, and I will defend them. But it also presents, they know I'm fair. It also presents to me with an opportunity to, to have a conversation. They'll listen to me because they see I'll protect them. You see what I'm saying? And that's yeah, the app. So, but go ahead, Kevin. And then we're going to go to uh, Jay, Jay Menelik. Go ahead. Yeah, so, so that's true leadership. You've built a platform yeah. of trust. And that's what you need is, is, is trust. And right. the gentleman mentioned earlier about Ice Cube and the Platinum Plan and see what was done to him. And it is it's really upsetting to me because everyone knows how I feel about our men and I, yeah. why I always socialize. You all are the greatest on the earth. And mm -hmm. I know that in my heart. I, I just know it. So this man was not speaking for us. He was trying to speak to us. And a lot of people don't realize that. And if you read the platinum plan, not the top sheet, but the entire if you go on the website and read it, it is a strategic plan to help us through. Um, so as far as a contract, this contract you're speaking about, yeah. you're going to have to do some deprogramming first. I'll work, <laughs> I'll work it on my end and you work it down there and we'll get some oh, others man. to work it on the East coast and in yeah. the middle and we'll come all together. It's going to take right. some work. <laughs> yeah. Kim, I think what we need to do is we just need to change the terminology. See, there are a lot of people that benefit from this conflict. Conflict gives rise to so much. It gives rise to money. You get people coming in. Yeah, girl, think like a brontosaurus, walk like a man, and you can make a million dollars on that. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Girl, go ahead and do this, what you need to do. Oh, it's so much conflict. It's so much money to be made. But see, what I'm doing is I'm coming in. I'm saying, well, let's be reasonable about this. Because, see, we got to live on this shit together. We stuck. No matter where we go, they still we still end up back together in that same shit. We move way out. And then the white people move way in. <laughs> you see that? They move, we move out of our neighborhoods and then they come take over our neighborhoods and we get mad at that and call it regentrification. We left there and then you went there and took it over. Like, because everywhere you go, they don't want to be with you. You see what I'm saying? So we always end up together. So we're still stuck on this same 
rickety raft that we need to begin to try to figure out how we're going to get across and, and, and finish this voyage. But uh, anyway, Kimberly, we're going we're gonna to go on to Jay Menelik. How you doing, Jay? Welcome to the, the platform. What are your thoughts on this subject, the social contract between black men and women, the traditional roles? I also mentioned, Salam. how you doing today? Uh, say again. All right, yeah, Salam, hello. Oh, okay, how you doing? Are you, uh, are you, uh, uh, are you a member, are you a, a Muslim? No, 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 I'm not a Muslim. Oh, okay, all right, brother. Well, welcome, uh, here's the thing. Uh, what are your thoughts on this subject? Um. Uh, no, I was saying. Um, no, I was saying. Um, um, like me, you know, I have a different, you know, perspective. You know, um, uh, we call my mom, mother's father's side of the family uh, from East Africa. Okay. And, and um, I'm at you know, and I. Uh, my father is African American, but I would say that I think that as far as like black people in the West, you know, um, you know, you know, they're having like even um, you know this problem is even happening in the UK. So, and it's a Western issue. So this is not just like you know black American. I think that um, yeah, I agree. I agree with that. You know, but, you know I think. You know, I think in a sense that, like, um, in 2021, like, the culture is is so dysfunctional. And I think as far as the, my generation, as far as, uh, yeah, as far as it being a contract or something like that, like, the contract, I don't know if, it's there, if there is a contract, in, like, in my generation, maybe the older generation, or are you trying to say, well, no, you still have a contract. You're still bound because that, I mean, I'm assuming you're a generation. Are you generation alpha? I mean, uh, what's, what's alpha? Generation alpha is everybody 21 and under, or 20, 23 and under. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, a, yeah I'm a millennial. millennial huh? Oh, so no, nah, you, 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 no, nah, you definitely in it. Millennials, the oldest millennial, what are they like, 40 now? Yeah, you're, you're no, in it, brother. You're yeah, the yeah, alpha generation. Good. The alpha generation is the new generation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. Is it Generation Z? Is it Generation Z that's 22 and under? And Generation yeah, Everybody yeah. After 2016 is Generation Alpha. So, yeah, the millennials are, you guys are the next largest generation under yeah, the Gen baby Z. Boomer. Yeah, Gen, I think Gen Z is right under millennials. So, it's kind of like, I yeah, they're like the babies the, of the generation. You, millennials yeah, yeah, aren't babies anymore. You guys have grown up. Yeah, Gen Z, yeah. You, I think you, the oldest, the oldest Gen Z, I think is was, was probably born in like ninety six or ninety five or something like that. If you, because you, you know, like I think millennials was all the way from like the eighties to like yeah, you guys ninety been around y'all are y'all are forty years into the game. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, you guys, yeah, yeah. You, ain't, you ain't young no more, Mike. <laughs> you in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah, got yeah, the contract yeah. now. I see. The thing is about, like, people my age, we dealt with the contract. And I'm telling you, it's it's a horrible contract. You see what I'm saying? But the yeah, thing yeah, about yeah. Generation X, we're such a tiny generation. We very rarely, we don't really have a big effect. It's the baby boomers and the millennials. You guys, it's... Those two generations right there, I think we as X generations kind of like, okay, we just we just gonna do our time and, and listen to our 1980s and 90s rap music and move on. <laughs> but it's the millennials and the baby boomers, that's where the contract is really played out. It's just not enough generation X. But what I do think is the generation X produced the first group of women that um got the full dose of feminism like they, they their mothers were fully you know immersed in black feminism and so uh that kind of bled out to the millennial generation and that those baby boomers i tell people all the time generation x we were the bastards of the baby boomers you guys were the ones that came out after they got themselves together got jobs and got married so the millennials you guys the situation was a lot more privileged than ours but go ahead, Jay. I didn't mean to cut you off. What are your thoughts? Oh yeah, I think that um, as far as uh, I think um, 
as um, black people, you know, in the, um, you know, in America, I think um, there's not a, enough people being like honest because there's like no accountability, especially for like, especially like for the women. And I think that like, um, and I think that's part of the problem. And I think that like, if that's addressed, yeah. And I do we really want to go back to traditionalism, though, Jay? Middle. I mean, what well, well, what what are the benefits of traditionalism for men? Because well, as I read well, it, I would say, I would as say I read it, it, as I read it, we receive reverence and respect, uh, but nothing tangible. I mean, it's not like somebody was supporting us and pro providing for us and putting the roof over our head and making sure we were safe. What did we really receive? Like. Why should men go back to being traditional men? What's the what's in it for us, uh, Jay Menelik? Tell me, what, is there is there really anything tangible in it for men, especially black men? Well, yeah, I think that's a sort of like I, I mean, like I, I think those days are like um, are like kind of over. But I would say that like you know, like like I was saying, like for as me, um, like you know, like my you know. Um, like yeah, my partner is um is uh we call it uh, you know grew up in Africa so and I think that and basically you know and I I've noticed as far as like, like the, I know it's like the difference like you know it's, it's that like, right. you know, she was an accountant right she was a educator and she was an accountant and basically she's um, the reason why I said you no know, I was. Uh, you know, she's Ethiopian, and I think that uh, East African. But I think that uh, as far as like, the, I think the women, like I would say, an example, like a woman can have a career and be educated, you know, over there or something like that. But there's no competition between men and women, you know, something like the problem. But here. you know, Africa typically is is considered a less developed country. Oh, yeah, I yeah. think feminism is a, a product of uh, first world living. You got to be real comfortable mm -hmm. feminists. But uh, yeah, yeah, I agree. I'm going to get back to Malika, and then we're going to go to Kimberly, and then we'll come back to you in a minute. I want to kind of spread it around. All a right, bit. Yeah, yeah, I agree. We got the link in the chat room. Anybody who wants to join in, but thank you, um, uh, Jay Menelik. I appreciate right. you joining in. Thank you so much. Appreciate you taking the time to come on in here, Malika. What do you think, man? What are the benefits of even going back to traditional? I mean, it sounds like a. a, a Fool's gold. I mean, now that I look at it, let me see. I, I worked my whole life. Um, I sacrificed my dreams, my ambitions to pay for things and benefits for a woman and some kids. Um, in and, 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 and in response, I get respect and reverence, and he was a great man. That doesn't seem like anything tangible to me. Uh, like, I mean, how do I convince these men to go back to traditionalism? And I'm the lawyer. I'm asking, what do I need to sell them? How does that work? You sell them that you're going to have a better future. This ain't about you. Them. First mm -hmm. of all, what you got to understand, um, we stood on the shoulders of Kwame Ture, Malcolm X, Elijah Muhammad, Martin Luther King. They got reverence, but they provided a better way for you and me. Mm -hmm. The thing is, what we got to tell black men, and this is one thing we got to get out of our head, and this is the conditioning that we got from our slave captors, is that instant gratification. This is not about getting yours right now. This is about your sons, um, the good sisters, son. It's about our the next generation that's coming after us. It's showing if the thing is, if we could do a Thanos snap of black men and black women acting like they got some sense, you're going to see the next two or three generations of black men and women coming together and having a decent community. It's not something that's supposed to happen right now. It was never intended for something to happen just right now. The problem is we get so caught up in saying, I want mine's right now. No, it's not about you right now. We have to lay the groundwork for it to happen in the future. Okay, That's what we like, how do I get these young folks who are pretty darn selfish to think about 
some kid who they don't know who ain't born 50 years from now. What what do I do? What do I tell these men? I mean, because here we don't have a cohesive racial pride. The only time we seem to come together is when somebody gets shot. And then we go out, we go, don't shoot hands up. We're not actually doing the chain. When that wears off, we go back. To what our you're doing woman. it, brother. We go back. Hey, you're look. doing. Can I tell you something? You're doing it on two levels. You got three boys that you're showing it to. You have this platform that you're showing it to me. You're showing it to everybody twice a day. Your brother, <laughs> you're. Can I say something? Hear me out, and just hear me out on this. You are an attorney. You've made it, and I'm not saying made it, made. But my thing is, you don't have to do what you're doing now. You can Amen. sit pretty with your family, Amen. with your wife. You're on Sunday night. I know you got to go to work early in the morning and do what you have to do, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You you commit yourself twice a day, twice a day, to put in the work, to sacrifice and to show love. You're doing it. The thing is that you're showing it to me. You even said something. Brothers, let's call these women lovely ladies. Let's not be derogatory. You even said at the beginning of the stream how the way I was talking about Brother Kenneth. He's like, look, let him come in. We're not trying to be negative. You're putting seeds in our head to say, hey, let's, let's start in a different way. You're doing it. You're showing it. Dennis, you do not have to do what you have to do, but you're doing it because you said for the love of your people, but definitely something that you have is the love for black men. Not all and not many black men are going to say that. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I yeah. wish I wish I were that honorable. I'm not. Yes, you are. I'm homie. doing Stop. this. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm doing it because if I don't do it, then my own life and the life of my three sons are jeopardy. See, I have to deal with those other black men who are angry and filled with rage. My sons have to deal with those other black men who are angry and filled with rage. With rage, nine times out of ten, I'm sorry, one thousand times out of uh, uh, or nine hundred ninety nine times out of one, it's gonna be another black man that they take their anger out of. Mm-hmm. It's going to be another black man that they shoot down in the street. And so as I sit back, as I sat back on that island in 2016 and I saw all this anger brewing in the United States and I saw that here I am sitting on this island, I couldn't help but think about my children, my sons and my nephews and my uncles and my cousins and all these other black men who, even though I've made it, I'm safe. And ostensibly speaking, I could definitely get my sons out of there and they'd be safe. What about the rest of you? You see what I'm saying? Because if I abandon you, if I abandon my my sons and I abandon my people, then I have nothing to go back to. Yeah, I like the idea of travel. I like the idea of going back. But, you know, every now and then I want to go to the black community and be around people from my own culture. You know, every now and then I like going to the barbecue uh, spot and just hearing black folks talk. I even like ratchet girls a little bit. I ain't gonna even lie. I'm from South Central LA. I like to hear him chop that stuff and talk that stuff. I like it. That don't necessarily mean I want to marry your crazy butt, but still, I want to know that you're there. You see what I'm saying? Because you still remind me of something that I was raised with. Those same women that I love, my aunties, my grandmothers, I still love you. It's just with dysfunction. You see what I'm saying? But again, I'm not that noble. Malika, and I appreciate it. Okay, and thank you for the compliment, I guess, but I'm doing it for my own self interest. In that, what I want my sons to survive, and I want myself to, I don't want these young boys running up on me in 10 or 15 years with a Glock trying to take me out of my fancy car, or my sons having to deal with these angry boys. So it's incumbent upon me to begin to do that, but I can't convince everybody else of that. You see what I'm saying? They, they don't think. They don't think that it's going to happen to them. I'm saying we are living. I, I feel like we are, though. I feel like we have to do something, bro. And uh, maybe there is a little good in there somewhere. But for the most part, this is all self-interest. <laughs> so how you like that? Don't be trying to sneak no compliments in. You have me in here teared up. What's wrong with you, bro? 
Yeah, you gotta cut it out. But anyway, man, they mean to cut you out. Go back, bro. It's all you know what you have, though, man? <laughs> yeah. You have the spirit of two famous people that just came to my mind. Mm -hmm. How the way you're doing it. You got that spirit that what Dick Gregory did, God rest his soul. Mm -hmm. And you had the same spirit with um Ice Cube is doing. Yeah. My two yeah. favorite people. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, I, I, I guess I'm tired of I'm tired of us. I, I want to see my team win. Yeah, we all want to see. Know, it. But here's the funny thing. Winning, man, but but you, you know what the great thing is though? Like when I'm putting you in in that great company, those two men didn't have to do what they did. Mm -hmm. Dick Gregory did not have to do what he had to do. Dick Gregory was a great comedian and he talked about nutrition and he made money on a lot of other investments and he had to go back and do what he had to do for the black people. He was a staunch activist to the day he died. Mm -hmm. Ice Cube yeah. does not have to do what he has to do. Ice Cube can chill out, make movies and go on old hip hop tours and he could be cool. But no, these men use their platforms. You, why owe you? You use your platforms to reach us, man. I don't care. Yeah. I'm going to fight you tooth and nail. <laughs> yes, you are honorable. I don't uh, care what man. anybody say. You are let, honorable. You, to let me, me show man. you some. I ain't honorable. Let me show you. Man, I don't care. Up. You're honorable. <laughs> <homie>. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much, bro. I'm humbled by that. And it's hard for me to take. Uh, it's Can hard I say for something? me to take. Can I uh, say something? All great men are hard to take compliments because yeah. they're not coming from a narcissistic standpoint. They're coming from an honorable, loyal yeah. Standpoint. Real men understand honor and loyalty by just doing an action. They don't want accolades for that. Can I be the judge in this? I would say that he wins the argument, Dennis. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, well, let's get, look, we talking about traditionalism. Let's get back. I ain't want to talk. If we're look, talking about traditionalism, yeah. you're being a traditional man, brother. All right, yeah. All right. yeah. You know that, what? That's, that's that. And well, if I could, <sighs> if I could just piggyback off of what you said. <laughs> Our community needs more ground level soldiers. Yeah, I, had the, I had the great honor of interviewing John Wesley Mack a couple of years mm -hmm. ago. He walked with Martin Luther King, who was part of the sit-ins in uh, Greensboro, just a great man, the, one of the greatest moments in my life. And I asked him, well, who's a leader now? Who, who's the great leader? Mm -hmm. He couldn't answer me. He said, we have to get back to the ground level. He said, I think what we did was spoil you all because you're not carrying it on. Mm -hmm. So so um, I, I just wanted to say that. So we need a lot of dentists all over the place. So the groundswell will build and then that'll be trendy because a lot of the younger people, all they see are... Uh, what they want to see on the media. They don't want to take the time to read. They, they're hypersensitive, uh, hypercritical, impatient. It's just this culture yeah. of tension that we I, need to work through as well. Yeah. Let me, I'm not your leader. I'm just simply pointing out a path that you can take. I'm simply trying to, uh, trying to help quell this, this, this conflict that we have brewing amongst ourselves, brothers and sisters. I simply want you to begin this. I want black men to be able to speak. I want black men to be able to be heard. And I know that my position as an attorney and all these other things that are considered ostensibly successful requires that when I speak or when I have a platform, other people will listen. So basically what happens is because of who I am, it makes what you say more important. And that's why I do this. You see what I'm saying? I, this is about you, black men specifically. And of course we, you have sisters that come on, but this platform is about you being able to speak. Now, I may say some things that are provocative just to get people to spark, spark up, you know, a conversation like the other night. I said, uh, look at all these old men there and these fine young women. I got 200, 300 people in the chat room. And then we end up talking about what the role that men have played in society and how they should begin to think freely and recognize that they're free and they're autonomous human beings. Basically, that's what happened. Um, but either way, you know, y'all done got me all off track uh, <laughs> with all these damn compliments. I don't want no more of your compliments. You know what I want to do? I want to get back to the script that we had here. And the <laughs> script was traditional, traditionalism, the social contract. And I'm going to ask uh, 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 Kimberly, Kimberly. So, Kimberly, I'm going to ask you again. 
okay? What is in it for men to come back to, 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 to the table to even discuss? Like, why should we even come back to the table and discuss going back to that role? A lot of these brothers refer to traditional relationships in America in the whole as the plantation, which is a, not a good place, not a good word for black. If, if black people refer to an institution as the plantation, that means they recognize they were slaves. So well, why should I get these brothers to go back to being traditional husbands and try to save the black community when we got women who betrayed us for a few nickels from welfare and a few crummy jobs and some degrees in social studies from the local university? They just gave us up. And we're looking at the white women, they still together with their man. Hispanic women are still together with their man, treating them with respect and whatnot. And we, you know, we built this country and we catching hell. How can I convince these dudes is this worth it? I know what Malika said. Malika said you should let them know that, you know, these young people need you, blah, blah, blah. And y'all heard what I said. I'm saying if we don't do something about it now, they're going to be running up on you, jump, kicking in your doors. But I don't think other people care that much. So how well, do I, I get these brothers to come back? You tell me. I think, I think Dennis, I think leave it alone. I, I talked well, with my son. I told him there's no benefit in you getting married legally in this country. There's just no benefit. That, you said I mean, that to your son? Of course, you can call him right now. You, ooh, it's, ooh, they no, all kind of names. No, for you. no, no. no. But hear me out. I don't, I don't yeah. care about that because what I care about is the black man too. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a pick me because I've already been chosen. So you can't be a pick me if you're already chosen. But no, seriously, and I'm very, I'm very serious about this. I don't see the benefit of black men getting married. It would just absolutely be a choice that they would. It's something that they would want to do because it's their choice. But legally, this system is not for you, especially marriage, and especially the way our culture is within our community. We're going to have to be deprogrammed. What you tell me, what is the benefit in a black man in this country getting married? Please tell me what what's the benefit? Well, my notes say my notes say respect and reverence. You, know? you can get respect and reverence without getting married. What is the benefit yeah. Yeah. in you getting married? And I, I'm a black woman yeah. and, and I get it. I understand. I it's okay if you all don't want to get married because I understand. Now, I one, of the, one, of the, one of the lovely ladies from, from the, she said, do you want grandchildren? Does this lovely, it's do, not basically. About me. It's not about me. It is wow. not about me. It's not about me. It's about what's best Praise for God. my children. If my, if my son wants children, then I'll have grandchildren. If he does not want children, then I won't have grandchildren. That's it. And that's that. What I'm doing is I'm following the plan and I'm trying to build generational wealth so my children can own their own and have their own and control their own. It's not about me. Yeah, that's a lot to bring in. Now, now, let me. So, OK, you mentioned that getting married in this country. What about if your son decides to get married in another country? How would you feel about that? Or, or let's say your son decides to marry a woman from another country in her country. Or, I mean, it's a whole lot of different that, that, scenarios, that, man. But uh, yeah, God, that, that, thank you for your, thank you for your honesty, and thank you for that. These black men need to hear that because but, but please, can I, I can, can guarantee I you, there's a there's a hundred black men who gonna hear this in the next hour or two that wish they had a mom like you that would say. Hey, baby, it's not about me. It's about you. They. This is why they need to hear that. But but go ahead. What are your thoughts on them getting? Because I, I want the brothers to get married. I just don't want them to get jammed up in family court and divorce and children and alienation and all that. This is uh, the thing. This is the thing, Dennis. When when I was raising my children, I have a son and a daughter yeah. by a man I was married to. Okay. okay. Um, rest in peace. Rest in peace. Um, but this is the thing. I raised my children to be able to compete globally. So they have traveled the world already before they were in high school. My son came back. He said, I love Barcelona. I want to move to Barcelona. So mm -hmm. he's already been in other countries and experienced certain things. He's 25 now. 
So if he decides to marry another woman somewhere else, he already knows his worth. He knows he knows his compatibility. He knows what he's compatible with. And that's what I think a lot of this culture stuff has been forced on us without us being taught what we're compatible with. If you're not compatible with a woman who has an attitude, no matter what color she is, then that's not what you're compatible with. Move on. But it is not about me. My son needs to know his worth just as my daughter does. And it's not a competition. Women, a lot of women need to get out of, well, what about my grandchildren? Do you really want to be a grandmother? Do you really want to be a grandmother? If, if so, do you have a husband? Because if you had a husband, you all would be traveling and you you wouldn't be so concerned about that. I mean, I don't know. That's not my thing. It's what my son wants for his life. Girl, you are very good. You, you, you really sound awesome. special. Yeah, you are. I mean, yeah, uh, these brothers don't hear that, uh, uh, Sister Kimberly. These black men do not hear that sort of uh, language. Or uh, I, have you? I ain't never heard that. Before. I've ne I've yet to hear a woman say that. Uh, and I've been on this for a minute now, but that is, uh, I think we can all agree that's refreshing. Let's give uh, Sister Kimberly, Kimberly, let's put a one in the chat room for Kimberly, Kimberly. Everybody put a one because you are number one. We appreciate you for that. Wow. Um, well, I don't even want to take a break. I just want to continue on. Look, you guys contribute to the Super Chat, the Cash App. Thank you so much, Kimberly, Kimberly. Hang on for a minute. I want to go to John Smith. And then we'll go Jay back to Jay Menelik. John, man, what are your thoughts about this, man? What are we are we making progress? Because I mean, this sister said basically there are no benefits to traditionalism. I basically pointed out that the benefits were intangible, you know, and then she pointed out what I concluded too in my notes that intangible benefits versus the tangible uh obligations that you have to fulfill, it's not worth it. You see what I'm saying? Especially yeah. considering that this same social contract can be can be breached again, you know. But then, but then think about it. What happens to the black community if all of our young sons begin to go overseas or all of our young sons begin to marry out? What happens to the black community, John Smith? The same uh, community that has been the foundation of this country. Like, what happens to it? you know? And that, and even though. I support Kimberly for her honesty and her truth. And she's right. Her, she, I'm beautiful. But man, what happens to the black? I want to be able to come back to the barbecue in 30 or 40 years. If God willing, I'm still around. What happens, bro? You understand what I'm saying, John? Yeah, I got you. Um, and, and, you know, I think for the most part, uh, just what you're doing here on this platform. And I yeah. think, uh, kind of what I've seen happen in, in, in the black community at large, uh, at least on the social media front, um, yeah. that there's becoming, there, there's a shift going on. And oh. we're starting to become more, you know, more centered on doing each other, doing each other well, because let's be honest with you, between feminism and all these other movements that have co-opted the black, you know, the, and disrupted, uh, black men and women from joining uh, in a functional space. Yeah. Uh, we have, you know, it, it's 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 shifting now. And you're right. Well, where do you think it's shifting to? Tell, go ahead and talk to us. Where, where? It's, it, you know, it's shifting to us healing each other. Now it's happening slow. You know, and nothing happens. Nothing worthwhile happens quickly, as we know. It there's a climb. Right. Um, but the thing about it, we still, I think we still have to maintain vigilance in that space to ensure that this keeps, we keep marching down this road of healing and togetherness. Do you, do you like the use of the term instead of referring to the ladies as all these horrible, just call them lovely ladies and then they, let them argue about, you don't want me to call you a lovely lady. And then the other thing, referring to this war of the sexes as a renegotiation of, of a social contract, Isn't, is that a, a step in the right direction, at least in changing the, the, the terminology that we use? I mean, what are your thoughts on that? I think every little bit helps, and this is my little contribution. When you hear lovely lady circulating throughout the internet, that came from 
unfiltered. That came from this group of unfiltered. Uh, yes. when you, when, I mean, I think it's how, what are your thoughts on that? Kind of keeping the tampering down the hate. What do you think? Man? Yeah. And, and, you know, and, you know, as we, you know, you stated words are very powerful. I mean, you and you, you being in, in law, you know how if something's written a certain way, it means something totally different than what you think it does. So, right. you know, changing, changing, I mean, and words are very powerful. So using the, you know, using endearing words towards each other, that's, that's the, you know, that's the foundation of us starting that space to heal, you, you know, and I think, yeah. I've, you know, I've been on the show a few times and uh, with that, when we talk, when I, when I talk about the highlight, you know, how we glorify the, the strip club culture and the, you know, and all of that and how, what, what kind of spawned out of that, what kind of terms, uh, you know, come out of that for women. Uh-huh. Uh, we, we need to really relax that because that that doesn't get us anywhere. That's that's a disruptive term, and you know, and it conjures up all types of negative stereotypes of our you mean, you know, lovely of our lovely sisters. Uh, these lovely ladies, right? <laughs> yeah. The brothers, yeah, the brothers are hot, man. You know, the brothers are hot, but uh, you know, the thing about the term "lovely lady" it rolls off the tongue like "mother." You see what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, you know, but once again, you, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta know your audience because yeah, if, if you say, if you say that and you get, you know, get someone is, is, is towards a feminist, uh, kind of pointing in a feminist direction and uh -huh. you say that they can see that a whole other way. <laughs> well, you know, that, that's like the, using the term, uh, what do they call them? Uh, Karen's. Yeah. Go ahead and get mad. We gonna still use it. Okay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, uh. I'm Dennis, may go I ahead. say yeah. something? Go ahead, Kimberly. Go. If, if there are any lovely ladies listening to this right now, really listen to what the men are saying. They want to be with us. There's something stopping it. And I believe it's this attitude that we have or that we think we don't have or whatever. I don't know. Well, let, let, me, let, but, me, let me tell you, Kimberly, I'm going to be honest with you. A lot of brothers want to be with us. A lot of brothers don't, and they're looking, and the brothers that do, they're here and they're talking, and the brothers that don't, they're here and they're listening and they're talking, and they're listening for more, they're listening for the confirmation of the reasons why they don't want to be with the system. So right. mm -hmm. what I'm trying to tell them is, what I want you ladies to know is that uh, there's a window. There's a window of opportunity that we have to reconcile, but at some point, just like these lovely ladies have walked away and breached the contract, uh, at some point these brothers are going to get up from the table and they're going to walk away. Here's what I predict, and this is something I wanted to talk about. We're all the way up into an hour and 30 minutes, so, you know, it's 10 o'clock and I'm tired. But uh, here's what's going to happen. You're going to have an influx of Latina women coming to the United States. So all this SYSBM, brothers going overseas, they're not going to have to go anymore. The women are going to be here. And yeah, you know, I know the sisters, there ain't nobody fine as you, but these brothers will take these women who are really willing to play these traditional roles. You see, and I hate to say this, it's going to sound bad, you know, but brothers ain't really that picky. You see what I'm saying? If you go to the local Walmart, you'll realize brothers are really not that picky. And if you get a woman who's treated you with respect and admiration and kindness and being cooperative and submissive and feminine, They'll work with you. That's just how black men are. I've been telling folks for about the past past several months, at least on here, black men are some of the most loving, reasonable, easy to get along with men on the face of this earth. If you do some surveys and you see how women are treated in these other countries, especially women of color are treated in places like Africa, China, South America, Central America, Hell, even Russian women. These are white women. If you see how they're treated by their men, you would you you would uh, you would compare them to black men and the, and the stuff that black women complain about. Black, you'd be like, black men are saints compared to some of these Russian men. Black men are angels there. compared to some of these men in South America. They are the beautiful. They're easy to get egalitarian. We even have the reputation for being more egalitarian than everyone else on this planet. Everyone else in this country. That's why those women. They don't mind dealing with us after dealing with some of these guys from, from these Central American countries and South American countries. I did a special on them. So here's what's going to happen. Some other team is going to pick your players up. 
You don't want these black men, I promise you. There are some women from other places that are gonna come in and pick them up. And these brothers are not gonna be alone forever. They're not gonna, they're not gonna stay. I, I know what they say. And shout out to the whole, you know, to the to the to the red pill community and everything. And you know, some guys are, I'm just chilling, I'm dealing with myself, and I'm gonna be uh, you know, go my own way and whatnot. I get it, I understand that. But eventually, fellas, you're not gonna spend 30, 40, 50, 60 years by yourself. You're eventually going to want to desire the company of the woman, and you're going to go with what's the best available. So what I'm saying is they're not going to be there forever. I believe we got about another 10 years but we, before, we meet, before we meet critical mass, and it's just commonly understood amongst black men that you're, you're, you are free to date whoever it is that you want to date, whoever it is, that whole, the X generation. We were the last ones with that racial uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Racial uh, loyalty thing. You see what I mean? Fight the power. These generations, this generation, uh, these Z generations, and this alpha generations, they're not even thinking about it. Maybe the millennials too. Maybe they have some racial loyalty. But Z and alpha, they don't even care. They date who is sitting next to them in class. So, you know, that's my thoughts on this. I hope this brings about some good conversation. I hope you guys take this and take this terminology and share with the people in your households, share with the people in your offices, share it amongst yourselves and your families. Let's have an intelligent conversation. Let's have a civil conversation about the social contract that exists between black men and black women and the traditional roles. Are we gonna renegotiate them? What are we going to get? And I'm going to tell you, ladies, it's going to take a lot more to bring black men to the table other than I respect you, reverence, you're a good man. Real men do this. Real men do that. That might have worked in the night before the 1950s and 60s. But because these young men have seen your treachery and here's the other thing, they know their value now. They know what they're worth on the open market. They know if they go to South America, if they go to Colombia, if they go to East Africa, if they go to West Africa, if they go to Eastern Europe, if they go to Asia, they know the caliber of woman they can get, feminine, fit, submissive, loving, and traditional. And so now you're going to have to what, ladies? You're going to have to barter with your men. You made the mistake. You took what the white man was offering in the 1960s. You took the welfare. You took the set aside. You took everything they had. You, you went and it, did, and it failed. You see what I'm saying? But your men are still here. We're still willing to talk. It's not going to be forever. That's all I'm saying. You know, anybody else? Look, Malika, thank you, man. We got, you got two minutes to wrap this thing up. Then we're going to go across the board. We got everybody wrapping. We got two minutes. I want to make sure everybody gets some, some last words in. So what else you got to say, Malika? Give me, you got two minutes. Um, Brothers, sisters, he, the message. Only thing that Brother Dennis is doing is making us think, helping us think helping us think about what we are. I don't care what anybody says. We can't make it without each other. We cannot have a community without each other. God made us to work together. You see how the way we're going as we're separate. So whatever it is, a, a contract, it's not about us just coming together and just being happy. No, a contract is coming together to make both parties makes sense and also just be in accordance to for a greater good not just for you not just for me but for the whole community and other communities that's coming before us okay. thank you so much uh sister kimberly kimberly we got two minutes what are your thoughts on this thing yeah I just, yeah. yeah yeah if there are just any women listening right now my plea to you my role is pure accountability I just want us to look at how society has treated our men as a whole, not your individual choices because you do have discernment. We all have discernment, but understand how amazing they are. And that's all I need to say. I appreciate it. Jay Menelik, man, you got two minutes, man. What are, what are your five closing thoughts on the subject? Um, no, I think that, uh, for it is going to have to be a big culture change and extreme measures have to be taken place or something like that. That's the only way I see it. Um, 
Um, we call it see it surviving. So I think that, um, like you were saying, that um, there are some things that have to be, you know, take place. You know, like I would say, for example, like Nation of Islam, you know, the thing they did were, um, yeah, and I was saying the culture is just not sustainable. And I think that, uh, um, yeah, I guess since I only got two minutes, I guess, you know, if I had longer, I would say more, but that's all I have to say for now. All right. Thank you. And before we go to John, look, we got another comment from sister here, a lovely lady in chat. Uh, let me just make sure I read this correctly because she's basically saying, uh, Tierra Daniel says, a man can train a BW, a lovely lady, rumble with the queen bee and take your place as king. Uh, we're not going to rumble with you, my love. Nobody's going to fight with you. That's not how a relationship should be uh, started. Either you come prepared to be a feminine woman who is cooperative, but nobody's going to fight you. That's what we're saying. It's over. That aspect is over. You're not, you're not, nobody's going to tame you. Nobody's going to train you. Horses need to be trained. Dogs need to be trained. You come as a civilized, feminine, uh, cooperative woman, or you don't get a seat at the table. That's what I'm telling you. What you're mentioning is something that's dysfunctional. Nobody's going to train you, my love. You got to get that 1980s, 1990s rhetoric and go away with it. This is not the era of uh, waiting to exhale. This is not uh, Stella's got a groove back. That's over. You're dealing with a different generation of thinking. Black men recognize their value and have options. They're not going to put up with it, period. That's just how it's happening. So I appreciate you coming in, but you know that, that, that hyperbole, that rhetoric is not going to fly here. But God bless you. I love you. Thank you for coming in. Uh, my man, John Smith. And uh got two minutes, man. Take us home, man. Hit it over the uh, center field wall. All right. Um, first of all, I, I, you know, if any sisters are out there listening, we want you to know as black men, we love you. We honor you. But no, not all of them, brother. Yeah, well, <laughs> you can speak for yourself. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, not all these brothers love these women. And not all of them honor. Yeah. And that's, and I, you know, you can speak for yourself, and I'm just saying it like that. I yeah. might love them, not them, or like a might, but that's that ain't how they feel, bro. Okay, you know? I understand. So, I, you know, like I said, I, you know, I love you, I honor you, and I want, you know, and I, and I want to bring, and and I would love to see healing within our communities because for us to, you know, we were at one point the crown jewels of the world, yeah. and some kind of way we we been reduced down through, through you know, uh, insidious policies and, and, govern, and governance to, you know, to diminish what we are. We, you know, we together can only build a strong nation. You know, right. we, but at the same time, you know, we have to meet each other where we are to build. And that starts with the way we interact, the way we talk to each other, you know, the, and, and, the, and, and, and the way we approach the, the world. We can't approach the world, at, at, you know, we can't approach the world as two separate entities as black men and black women. You know, mm -hmm. we, have to, we have to approach the world as a united front to build our nation. All right. Thank you guys. I appreciate everybody. So, um, you know, I think this has been, a, this is the second part of the social contract that exists between black men and black women. I think we hit some great points. Um, I intend to continue and keep this thing going. Uh, we are going to do what? We're going to, uh, again, address this subject tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be March 1st. I believe the first topic up for tomorrow is going to be the social contract that exists between black men and women. We are going to talk about interracial dating because, see, at this point, it seems to me the sisters are allowed to date interracially. And they are lauded for it and praised. That's right. Yes, queen. But when the black men do it, then they're, 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 they're treated pretty badly. They're shamed and, they're, and guilt is thrown their way. Even if the woman happens to be a black woman who is from another culture, still black, still of the African diaspora. So we're going to hit that hard. And I think that's going to be a very controversial conversation. You all invited. We're going to hold that tomorrow at 1.30. This is all part of the contract negotiations. These are the terms 
that are up for dispute. These are the terms that are being renegotiated in our society, uh, in our nation, and amongst black folks. So uh, again, thank you everybody. I appreciate everybody. Hey, shout out to my man, Volcanus. He always is contributing, man. That's my dude, man. But anyway, God bless you all. I love you. As I always say, man, I do this from a place of love. I wanna see us healthy, wealthy, strong. I wanna see my brothers doing well. I wanna see you guys emotionally stable, physically fit, financially able. This is why I do this. And of course, I wanna make sure that we put a lot of healthy, strong, and upstanding black men, law-abiding black men out there in the world because that's better for me, it's better for my sons, it's better for you, it's better for your sons, your nephews. And I think this is a I think this is a great way to start. So thank you, Kimberly. Thank you, John Smith. Thank you, Jay, Jay Menelik. Thank you, my man Malik. I appreciate you guys. I am exhausted. Uh, if you like what I'm doing, make sure you contribute to the super chat with the cash out. You know, I humbly, you know, give all praises to, to God for allowing me to have this energy to, you know, keep things going. It, it is definitely exhausting. And I know my family is, uh, they're a little bit concerned about me because I'm tired when I do this. It takes me several hours to prepare for each show. It's draining, but I do it because I love you and I care about you all. So, you know, don't, uh, as they say, don't make me, don't, don't, don't take this for granted. I'm not going to be here forever. OK, I'm going to do this as long as I can. But I need each one of you brothers to pick up and take up where I left off. It is black men who are going to have to begin to lead the black community back to salvation. These sisters are not going to do it. They can't do it. Doesn't matter how much education you give them. Doesn't matter if they're the community backbone. Doesn't matter if they got more entrepreneurs. It's not going to happen. It's only you, black men, that can save us. So God bless you. I appreciate it. Pick this mantle up, take it from here. I love you. It's Uncle D, I'm out.